the rest of the story. They were the new folks in town. They had to be because the hardware store proprietor had never seen them before. After all, sooner or later, he saw everybody in those parts, and sure enough, Gladys Love Smith promptly introduced herself to the man behind the counter. She was new to the area. Her husband drove a truck for McCarty's Grocery, she explained, and this, she said, is my boy. Well, the proprietor, uh, Mr. Forrest Bobo, looked over the edge of the counter, looked down, said hello there, and the child smiled back. Gladys leaned closer to Mr. Bobo. Today was the youngster's birthday, she explained. He was 11. He'd been asking for a bicycle. But for a family struggling to make ends meet, a bicycle was just too expensive. Could the proprietor suggest something else? But before either Gladys or Mr. Bobo realized it, the boy was already browsing the aisles of this store. It was more of a general store, really, a wide variety of items from which to choose. At any rate, when Mother found the little fellow, he was looking up, staring transfixed at something displayed on a rack just out of his reach. It was a... It was a twenty-two rifle. Well, I mean a real twenty-two rifle. Gladys gasped, you come away from there, she exclaimed. But the wild-eyed child standing there was utterly somewhere else, mesmerized. Maybe in his imagining he was in a sunny field, plinking tin cans from the tops of fence posts. Come away from there, his mother repeated. You can't have the gun. Mr. Bobo arrived just in time for the tantrum. First there was the whining... The why not, and the but I'll be real careful. And then, a fit of temper. If he couldn't have the rifle, the youngster declared, then he didn't want anything for his birthday. He didn't want a birthday at all. Gladys turned to Mr. Bobo apologetically. Her son really wasn't like this, she told the proprietor. Her son, in fact, hated arguing. Often to avoid a conflict, he would give his toys to other children. But for some reason, today was different. He had to have that gun. And Gladys had never seen her son so utterly determined about anything. The matter had to be resolved. Let me tell you how the mother resolved it. While she simply could not afford a bicycle for her son's birthday, she would not tolerate a dangerous firearm for an 11-year-old. She proposed another completely unrelated birthday present... It cost $7.75. The boy reluctantly acquiesced. Now, what you've just heard happened once upon a winter's day, 47 winters ago, January 8, 1946. The proprietor of the hardware store in Tupelo, Mississippi, would never forget it because of what came of it. What came of it was the spontaneous purchase of a $7.75 guitar and the concern of a doting mother named Gladys Love Smith Presley. Of course you remember her son Elvis Presley. You've also heard that Gladys had a profound influence on her son's life. Well, now you know she did indeed. For now you know the rest of the story.